always a bit of a treat when you walk in here, you're just completely kind of overwhelmed by these beautiful displays. But we're not here today to talk about that, we're here. To look at these beautiful plants down here, which Dave has already packed. We have a, let's have a look at the packing list. What have we got here? So there we go. I won't read it all out, you can see for yourselves, but we've got a lovely collection of the George Farmer classic species that we all know and love. And how many pots all together, Dave, would you say? About 40. 40 pots, so Aquascoper 900. Uh, a little bit of a story. Chris is a regular customer of Aquarium Gardens and he is a big fan of this scape, which was created by Philippe Oliveria as part of a workshop here a couple of months back, maybe three months ago now. And he, he's using this for inspiration, really. So we've chosen the hardscape and the plants accordingly. And the idea is going to replicate a similar style of scape today. So no pressure. Hi everyone, George here. And today I'm very excited because I'm at my friend's Chris house. He's got an aquascape at 900 that's empty. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to create a beautiful aquascape for you today. And we're going to use some inspiration from Philippe Oliveria's scape that he created at a workshop at Aquarium Gardens. I'll do a bit of b-roll of that right now for you so you can get an idea. Chris was super impressed with it. He wanted a triangular style layout, which we'll show you later. But just to point one thing out, can you notice anything weird about this light unit? This leg here. This is Ben. So, uh, damaged in transit, unfortunately. So just to point that out, because it would do my head in if I watched a video and I saw that bent leg. Sorry about that. We're going to get a new light unit. So before we start escaping, I'll just tell you a little bit of the story about Chris and how we met, etc., and about the system itself. So Chris is a regular customer to Aquarium Gardens. I think he's been researching aquascoping for a, for a good few months now. Uh, about nine, ten months. Uh, he's watched loads of my videos. He uh, reached out to me eventually, and that's why we're here today, to create Chris, hopefully, an awesome scape. So Chris is a complete beginner, and I think this is a good video for beginners as well. I mean, it's a high-end setup, but the actual process we go through to create the aquascape, you can apply to any level of budget. So the setup itself, at the top, we've got the Twinstar 900S, awesome light, the S series of uh, Twinstar LEDs, proven performers, I've been using them for a couple of years now. Grow plants, really great, great colour rendition for the plant colour and fish colour as well. The aquarium itself is an Aquascaper 900 from Evolution Aqua. I, I collaborate with Evolution Aqua, I help design these and I help like, market them on Facebook etc and social media and I go all over the country and Europe kind of setting these up for retailers as well so they're great aquariums, really high quality, low iron glass, clear silicon which is virtually impossible to see. We want an aquarium which limits the distraction so that's why we have the clear silicon, the very low iron glass. It's a minimal glass box, so your eyes actually focus to the aquascape itself. That's what we want to be looking at. We don't want to be looking at ugly equipment. We just want to be looking at a nice aquascape. Okay, first step we're going to do is the hardscaping process. Now, if you've watched many of my videos already, you know the importance of hardscape, but it's worth reiterating it. So the hardscape is the backbone of the layout. If we start off with a really strong, high impact hardscape, then it's very likely that we can easily create a beautiful aquascape. I like to think of it like a human body. Um, the hardscape is like the skeleton, like the structure, the main structure. And then in a human you have the muscles and the blood and the flesh, etc. That's like the plants and the water. So by starting off with a really strong hardscape, strong skeleton and, you know, strong aquascape, strong human. Strong, be strong. <laughs> I always look at the, the stone from every angle, think about the, the most impressive kind of interesting side and have that on display. So now I'm going to put this actually against the glass. You could use sort of egg crate or a thin layer of substrate perhaps. But I've done enough of these now to, to know that I'm not going to hopefully smash the glass. Positioned it about a third of the way along. We use a thing called the rule of thirds, which is ideal with like aesthetic balance for focal points. So it's about a third of the way along. We've got some space in front for the gravel and then behind the gravel, we're gonna put soil. So this is, these are gonna act like a barrier. Okay, so here we have some tropical soil. We've got two bags, two nine litre bags, and we're gonna put this behind the stone. This is gonna be where we're gonna plant into. And then in front of the stone, we're gonna put some cosmetic gravel. So not gonna plant into that just for, Cosmetic reasons.
top tip for preventing the soil migrating onto the front cosmetic sand, use these cotton wall balls. You can even use filter floss. And what we do is simply insert your cotton wall balls, wedge them in between the stones and the soil. It's hopefully going to prevent the soil from going in front. And this was passed on to me by Jeff Sensuke, who's an American aquascaper. Really good guy, really knowledgeable. Better scaper than me. He came over to actually, he came over to my place and um, he did a kind of small workshop and he told me about this technique, which actually he was passed on. Fukada, Fukada san, who is um, ILPLC winner twice in a row, which is an absolutely incredible achievement. The soil is not cheap, I'm not going to lie, but see it, see it as, as an investment. So, you know, you're giving the plants the best opportunity to grow well. It's super healthy for the water quality because it reduces the pH a little bit, the KH makes the water a little bit softer, which most plants prefer, most fish prefer. It contains lots of nutrients, the soil as well, so it helps to feed the plant roots. And it also has a high cation exchange capacity, which means that the the, the soil will actually take in nutrients from the water and then lock those nutrients into the into the soil and make those nutrients available to the plant roots. So the soil is a really, really good product. Uh, me and Chris are really happy with this and, and Chris's wife uh, sent a text saying how's it going and Chris thought oh yeah it's been really well, sends a really nice picture of it and, and she replies what's her name? Danielle. Danielle replies you better hoover up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. First remark. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god it's a creative genius it's a beautiful thing it's so natural looking. Uh, better, no, clean. Better, better clean up after <laughs> yourselves boys. Yeah, cheers. This is manzanita wood. This is two types of manzanita really. There's this type which has kind of been, uh, had its bark kind of removed and it's a lot harder to the touch and there's the gnarly stuff which I actually prefer. But this is still beautiful and it's really going to help recreate this style that Philippe originally uh, created for the workshop at Crown Gardens. Uh, most importantly Chris really likes it and you know he's the client. So, I really like it as well, to be fair. It's really simple to use. It, it almost escapes itself, this wood, because it is so interesting. We're going for a triangular layout, so we want the, the base of the triangle to be under there with the wood. And then we can always have a play around if we need to. Just be mindful of the light unit as well, if you're having the wood coming out the top of the tank. And that's one of the advantages about these rimless tanks is it's ideal to have wood protruding out the top, plants coming out the top. Most plants will grow out of water, so you know, think about this sort of thing as well. Now, interesting point in this, because we're not actually planting towards the front of the aquarium too much, I would actually have the light unit more towards the rear, mm. and then you're going to get this really nice backlighting effect as well. Because you've got a nice white wall behind the tank, it's going to really kind of give an extra sense of depth to the scape. So when you're looking through the tank from this angle, You'll see the plants and you'll see the illuminated white behind it and it really helps to create a sense of natural... Did you say like sort of three quarters of the way back? Or? Yeah, just where it is now I'd say. So okay. you can see it's kind of touching that bit of wood there in yeah. the middle. So you've got this, this is an interesting point. We talked about the rule of thirds earlier, so this is kind of in, in keeping with the rule of thirds. And then we've got this piece of wood that it's protruding from the top. That's also about a third of the way along, so it's compositionally quite a strong aquascape already I would say. And I like this piece here coming over these these pieces of stone here, that looks quite natural. And we've definitely got this sort of triangular effect going on already. It gives an example, guys, and a lesson, hopefully, that with starting off with a good, strong hardscape composition, we can really set the, set the tone of the aquascape. We can really kind of get it started in a positive manner, high impact manner, and a naturalistic manner, which is what we're doing today. Okay, let's talk about the plants. All from Aquarium Gardens, I think there's about 30 pots worth and it's really important to plant heavily from the outset. So think about algae and plants always in competition with each other. The more plants we have and the healthier those plants are, the less chance we get of algae. 
algae super likely in the early stages of an aquarium. So if we plant really heavily, look after those plants with good light, good CO2, good nutrients, good circulation and good maintenance, it's going to ensure super healthy plant growth and therefore hopefully no algae growth. So the plants themselves, we've got a couple of Buca philandra species, Buca philandra wavy green and Buca philandra red. We've got trident fern ready attached to the wood. This is the Tropica aqua decor. We've got Barbitis, we've got some Rotala, we've got some Ludwigia, we've got some Juncus repens. We've got a couple of different species of Crips. We've also got the Cryptocoroni Crispatula one to grow, which is gonna end up really tall. And we've got some Hygrophila pinnatifida, which I might plant into the actual um, around the hardscape rather than into the soil. So it's important we keep the plants misted, especially the Microsora and the Java firm, this will dry out. Give them a good old spray. And then we'll plant. That's the tank planted, really simple process. Uh, just inserted the Buca philandra in between the rocks, just using my fingers. Also, uh, same principle with the Hygrophila pinnatifida, the one two grow version. Just wedged it in some of the branches where they kind of interlock. And then with the Microsorum, just placed them strategically so they looked aesthetically balanced. The same with the Barbitis. And then we planted the stem plants, the Ludwigia and the Rotala in the background. They're gonna give a nice bushy and colorful appearance. The Crips kind of in the mid-ground and the, the Cryptocryne Crispatula in the back left because that's going to go really tall and kind of arch over the whole scape and really accentuate this triangular effect. And then some smaller Crips are on the right hand side and the Junkus Reapens as well just to add to this kind of complex texture. So parting process, relatively straightforward, relatively quick and I think it looks great already, can't wait to see it grow. Okay, exciting times, we're ready to fill with water. Got my special red colander, hashtag red colander. If you don't know what this is, it's been with me throughout my aquascaping life. I've had it for 15 years, and it's pretty much filled up every aquascape I've ever done. So I do have a close emotional attachment to it. In fact, you can even buy t-shirts with it on. So Chris is gonna turn the water on. We've literally got it going straight into the mains. We're not putting any livestock on here, so we're not worried about dechlorination. This is a garden hose, straight into the, to the mains water. Uh, we've got a special kind of the Eheim inlet thing there and it gets dispersed by the red colander, hopefully fills up the water nice and slowly and then we get a nice hopefully crystal clear aquarium for you right away. Let's go. Okay Chris, go for it. <laughs> So that's the scape complete. We've filled it up with water, we fit the filtration and the CO2 kit. We will be fitting glass inlet and outlet to replace the black plastic that you can see there right now. Uh, obviously they look a little bit ugly in this style of aquascape, so to have that glass it's just much more discreet and like I said right at the beginning of the video it's all about trying to focus attention on the aquascape itself and not the equipment. The CO2 kit we've set to around about two or three bubbles per second. We've got the CO2 drop checker here. That will turn a nice green colour eventually, hopefully. If it turns yellow, it means there's too much CO2. If it stays blue, it means there's not enough. I have done a video on how to measure CO2, so check that out. I'll leave a link up there. The, the scape is quite simple at the moment, but as it, as it grows, as the stem plants grow in particular and the crypts grow, it's going to take on a really kind of more complex kind of composition. It looks quite simple now, like I said. Uh, but Chris is really happy with it, I'm happy with it. Um, we've gone for something a bit different with like a really kind of clean foreground. We've not used any small rocks or any kind of gravels or anything. We've gone for this really ultra kind of white and then going straight into a grey stone. And I think it works really well. I think it's a nice contrast. And I think as, as the scape matures, it's really gonna, you know, that contrast is gonna be enhanced as the plants behind get more mature and more complex and more colorful. I've, told Chris what he needs to do every day, every week, every month to maintain this in the long term and then hopefully in sort of three months or so it will look amazing and I can come and give you guys an update. 
So I've got a question for you like I always do and you can, might be able to guess what it is. Uh, what fish would you put in here? Let me know in the comments what fish would you like to see stocked in here. Chris actually doesn't know what he wants to put in here yet so he's probably quite keen to get your ideas as well. So do let me know. Okay guys, I'm going to sign off there. Thanks so much for watching. You take care. Keep on skating. Cheerio.